Cancer, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. So before I jump in Cancer, feel free to take advantage of the 2018 holiday gift and at this point, I believe there are just spaces left in December and January. So click in the description box down below, take advantage of that little gift and that little sale I've got going on for you, okay? All right, Cancer, so this month is a super interesting month, I think, because not only do we have Venus going retrograde, which is really the big news of the month, right? And when we have a retrograde, we're going to look back. We're going to reflect back with Venus. Venus is our planet of romance, of love, of affection, of finances, for sure. And it's mostly the question of value. And when I say value here, yes, it's it's financial value. It's self-esteem value, though. That's the thing I keep thinking about you right now, um, Cancer. I feel like you're just in a space of, of your self-esteem has changed, the way you're ready to pursue present yourself um, has changed and this month I think you spend a lot of time finding your voice as well seeing if your joy has been represented are you speaking up for what you want right these kinds of things are what you're gonna look at in this Venus retrograde as well as some things that have to do with home and family and inner security and all of that good jazz so let's jump into this month and take a look so I can get you out in and in enjoying it okay now please as the month is happening um, share with me Share with me your experience. What's going on? Where are you feeling the weight of this Venus retrograde in your actual chart? Um, so that we can talk about that. I would love to hear about it, okay? So first and foremost here at the beginning of the month on October 3rd, we've got Mercury who is in Libra coming into a square with Pluto who's in Capricorn, so your seventh house. Now whenever there's a square in astrology, what's going to happen is it's going to put you under pressure, right? It's almost like, it's like you're in the center of the box and it's just squishing you. So what happens with a square is yes, it creates tension, right? So we've got tension here between home, family, real estate, property, the fourth house space and the seventh house space of relationships and you're getting squished in there. So you're going to explode out of that box. You're going to take an action to get out of that box. Now this can sometimes feel a little bit like crisis energy, but that's sometimes what motivates us to get moving, right? Now, between your fourth house and your seventh house, something that I'm looking at for you this month is yes, there could actually be a relationship around your housing situation that is coming to an end, that's coming to a tipping point and decisions have to be made, words have to be said. You've got to figure out where you're gonna go. Now this doesn't always mean that there's another person in your bonking heads. Sometimes that's the deal, but this could be inner conflict for you as well. Are you trying to figure out where to live next? Are you trying to figure out should you take that job and relocate? What is it about your house? housing situation that's under fire and under pressure and needs to have some decisions made on it. Now the other part about this for me with you is I think about this internal security, this internal foundation that you have um, and whether or not you're gonna break free from some things from the past, right? Do you have these ideas that you grew up with? Do you have these ideas that have been in your life for a very long time and you're finding out that they don't fit right now? And maybe they're in regards to a relationship and you're like, I can't, I can't be who you think I should be because this is who I am, right? Where is that one-on-one -on -one relationship that is needing some adjusting happening here because you're finding that your new foundation, your inner security, your emotional needs are not being met or have shifted. So. I think that's going to be a super interesting proposition for you to bring to the table. Last thing I want to say about this, and this will continue through the month, is that this could also just bring a change in relationships with women in your lives. That fourth house is very much so a space of women or roots or your past, so you could be having a shift in that for sure, okay? Now, on the 5th, we've got Venus moving into her retrograde energy, and this is going to be in the sign of Scorpio, so lighting up your 5th house space here. Now, first of all, like I said, in a retrograde, we're going to look around, we're going to look back. You're re-looking over the value here, and one of the biggest pieces of value I think that you're looking over here um, is if your voice is finding its way up and out into the world. Are you expressing yourself? Are you joyful in what you're doing? Do you have connections with your children or children that need to be looked at and readjusted based on value here as well? I definitely think if it's something related to children or a passion project that you have or a, or a something you were interested in, a business or something like that, something you've been interested in, you could be spending a little bit more money or money could be drying up moving towards this project, but it doesn't last forever. Just read 
redo the ideas, relook at the financing, things like that. Now, Venus retrograde is infamous for bringing back past lovers, okay, past romance. So this could also be a time where you've got um, an old lover coming back into your life. Whether this is they actually show up in your life in person or maybe it's just like, you know, you, you get a, a Facebook message or you run into them somewhere or you're you're thinking about them, right? Especially things connected to past lovers because Scorpio is a deep energy. So if you've had any hurts or anything down there um, or any regrets, you could be looking at this as well. But ultimately, from the most private space of who you are, you'll be able to look at these areas and make adjustments and bring them into the answer of what's the value of these things in my life. Now, on the 9th, we have got, excuse me, on the 8th, we have got a new moon happening in the sign of Libra. This is going to light up the fourth house space for you. So home, family, real estate, and property, okay? Now, at the new moon, we want to begin something, right? This is a fresh start. We plant seeds of intention for what we want next. Where do we want this to go? What do we want to grow into? Fresh start is what's happening here. But, it's also in the sign of Libra. So here we are again with this question of equilibrium in your life. Is there enough of you or too much of you in your life, right? How are you showing up? Look at this new moon. Where do you need to establish harmony and balance in your home life, in your internal inner securities, right? In, you know, the, the moon also governs over our reactions to things, right? How are you reacting to the people in your environment? Are you getting along with women? Or is this the time in your life where you're supposed to be growing in your relationships with other women, right? Or with women, I guess I should say. Um, the new moon here certainly could mean that somebody's making a move. Someone's coming into your house. Someone's going out of your house. You're leaving your house the housing situation could be under change or it could begin to be under change now and over the next four weeks that starts to pan out but whatever it is whatever you need harmony balance and equilibrium for in your fourth house area um, plant those seeds of intention okay now, when we get to the 10th, we've got Mercury entering into Scorpio. So Scorpio is very busy. It's a very busy fifth house for you this month. But with Mercury there, Mercury is not retrograde yet. So Mercury is still forward. It's still savvy. It's still thinking. It's able to connect and rationalize and, and pick through the details, right? So here in the fifth house, I think Mercury is also helping you find your voice. And I really feel like a lot of where you're finding your voice is going to be in this home zone, in the relationship relationship zone, whatever it is, I feel like it's also very highly connected to a feminine energy in some way, shape, or form, and you're speaking up. Mercury also makes you a great observer, so you're able to watch what's going on in this area of your life with your children, with your joy, with your hobbies, with your projects, with that new business, with any of this stuff, and figure out is this where I need to be expressing myself? Do I need to have something to say about this? Do I need to make a decision in this area? What's the best decision? So watch the details of your fifth house um, as you go through the month, okay? When we get to the 23rd, now the sun has jumped up here into Scorpio. Wherever the sun is at, the sun is bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. So I'm telling you, the changes that you're making to your fourth house sector, the things that you're considering over there in your home, are also going to be connected to your joy. Wherever the sun's at, you want to be seen. You want to have vitality. You want to be known, right? So in this fifth house, finding your voice, speaking up, bringing the passion, bringing the joy to the surface, things with children. Children, whatever it is, all of this is coming up because you want this area to be healthy. The universe is trying to help you be healthy in this area. So expect a lot of movement and a lot of life. I'm telling you, you may really be finding your voice. I just got this little tip, okay? So I don't know who needs this, but for somebody this month, someone who was once in your life, maybe even romantically, but certainly a one-on-one -on -one relationship, they could be coming back because now you realize the value that that person had in your life, and it could be an opportunity to try something again. Typically, it is not recommended that during a Venus retrograde, you try and start a new relationship, but an old relationship could be coming back. Take it slow. Pay attention to what's going on. Don't rush headlong into anything. I would just suggest that you don't because Venus comes out of retrograde, and you're like, ugh, I remember I still don't like you. But this can also be a time of clearing, of um, healing as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm not sure who needs that, but somebody's got somebody coming back. Keep me posted in the comment section.
Okay, on the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus, which is an energy that you typically are very, very comfortable with. You like that it's a compatible energy for you. So the first thing I would tell you is because the full moon is in Taurus, where do you need to be grounded? Where do you need to actually ground down? Taurus is an earth energy. Where do you need to get your feet into the earth and be grounded so you can make some decisions. Now this lights up your 11th house space, okay? The full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So around your friends, around your social networks, um, groupings, your technology, your search for helping humanity, your independence here, all of these things are up for reevaluation at this full moon because it's time to shift them. You know, and let's just say you happen to be the cancer this month that is making that move. Of course, when you move, you could have new neighbors. That's a brand new social group, right? You could be the cancer who said, I'm not working for a corporation at one more day. The time is now. I'm going to work from home. And then you've got to update your technology. You could be shedding some friends because you see that there's this is, we're not traveling the same road anymore. You can even be adjusting or updating or switching in some way your social media things. So that could definitely be a thing as well, which I think is important to consider because when we get to the 26th of the month, the Sun and Venus are going to be in conjunction there in Scorpio, and this is going to bring a change to your social relationships for absolutely certain. So this could actually be helpful to you. Now, on the 31st, we've got a couple things happening. First, Mercury is going to enter into the sign of Sagittarius. This is the sixth house. So this is a place of not only work, especially if you freelance work, but co-workers, um, any connections to work. You could really see Mercury helping you be very open-minded here, exploring new ideas, learning something new at work. But this is also a space of health, and I would ask you to consider where is your mental health? You know, where is your thinking? Where are you at in your health and your open mind? to explore things here and also um in, in just your physical health with your body, do you need to be having some conversations about what's going on with your health? Mercury makes you very open-minded, and it usually in Sagittarius makes you very optimistic and polite as well. So, you know, enjoy that if there are conversations that need to be had. Now, also on the 31st, Venus is going to still be retrograde, slide out of Scorpio, and move up into the sign of Libra. So now it's going to spend um, November working on your fourth house. So that retrograde in the fourth house, you could be seeing the value in a housing situation. You could be seeing the value in women in your life. You could be making peace with women in your life. You could be making peace with your internal foundations and reactions to life and things like that. Whatever it is, this Venus retrograde is going to have you being um, more willing to see the value in this area of your life, which I think is very, very useful for you because you may also find out that you can save money with Venus retrograde. If you're trying to make a move, you know, maybe these places have been too expensive to rent or to buy and somebody drops the cost of the house and then you're able to afford it. So, you know, Venus retrograde's not all terrible, okay? I promise you it's not all terrible. So this could be an energy you could work with though, all right? Okay, guys, I think it's going to be a good month. Please keep me posted on what's going on, and I have to know who's got this romance coming back, so please let me know in the description box or in the comment section, my goodness, down below, okay? Don't forget to take advantage of the um, 2018 holiday gift, and I will see you, beautiful friends, in the weekly video and, of course, in the next monthly video. All right, you guys, I love you so much. Bye.